The ultimate in sports destinations plays host to the ultimate in youth volleyball talent with teams from around the country and around the world. Today, these AAU stars hope to dig deep, proving to themselves and their clubs what it takes to be champions. Welcome to the 44th Girls Junior National Volleyball Championships. You're looking at center stage for club volleyball around the world. The HP Fieldhouse as we get set for the 12 Open Final. Vaquetas, the team out of Puerto Rico, takes on Rox Red, made up of the best young players from the state of Florida. And it has been a tough road to get to this championship. You look at Rox Red, the road they had to take going through Mizuno and Boiler Juniors. Meanwhile, Vaquetas, no stranger to this championship as they won last year and the 12 and 13 age group. As we welcome you inside our state-of-the-art studio here at the ESPN Wide World of Sports, I'm Drew Felios. Thrilled to have you with us. Should be a fun day here at Walt Disney World, and we're thrilled to be joined by Aaron Campbell, the former UCF star. Aaron, every time we come here, it just gets bigger and better. Yeah, and I saw on the way driving here that it's now the world's largest volleyball tournament, and you get that sense of the mass the impact that it has on these girls. There's so many teams around. There's so many teams watching. So it's so cool that we get to be here and watch the tournament. All right. These young players are fun to watch. And you're going to be amazed at what some of these youngsters do throughout the day. You take a look at the rosters for Vaquetas. Players like number three, Rivera, the MVP of this squad. And for Rox Red, player like Sarah Falk, number five. These players are well beyond their years, Aaron. Absolutely. And we're really going to see kind of where volleyball is evolving to at this level. This is where they're doing a lot of the testing and the technique that they want to have at the Olympic le level later on. So there's going to be a lot of really fun stuff to watch today. For Vaquetas, you will rarely see this team get out of system. That's because their head coach, Freddy Vasquez, as fundamental as it gets. And he's very intense, very fiery, like all of these teams seem to be. Yeah, and he brings that level of enthusiasm to his team, and it really, really kind of spills onto them. It's a domino effect for the match. On the other side, you've got Kimberly Vock, no stranger, a very familiar face in club volleyball around the state of Florida. Yeah, and she's a very, very intense coach. You know, you see her, she actually won some national ch or some championships at the state level here in Orlando, but she's just a very, very fundamental coach. That's all she focuses on with these girls, and she lives and Breeze Fundamentals. When we come back, Vaquetas and Rox Red locking horns, 12 open championship just around the corner. The ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida has emerged as the pinnacle of youth tournament travel, catering to the That's needs of the yeah, entire family. Not, yeah. We offer a complete line of solution-oriented products and services to address the complex needs of teams on the road and the team parents who support them. To find out how to achieve vacation victory, visit ESPNWWOS.com. Soccer is a second language at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, and we want your team to join in the conversation. Develop your skills with the help of international soccer superstars on one of the nation's biggest stages, all while enjoying an experience that only Disney can provide. To find out how you can play here, visit DisneySoccer.com. Enthusiasm abound inside the HP Fieldhouse as we get ready for Vaquetas and Rox Red here in the 12 Open Final AAU Junior National Volleyball Championships. This is the 43rd, 44th year rather in Central Florida. As you still see some of the best in the world here over the next few hours, Daniela Mercado, tremendous, a setter number 15 for Vaquetas and Martin number four one of the players for Rox Red to really count on here. Vaquetas, 
very much going to rely on their offense. On the other side, the team from Florida, Aaron, thinks that defensively that could be the key to victory. Yeah, and as long as the rally goes on longer, the harder it is for these younger girls to, to keep the momentum going in their favor. So the fact that OT really wants to focus on defense does work well in their favor, and they want to slow down the fast arm swings of this Puerto Rican team. Julia Kane, number 13. Very talented in red, as Rox Red will be wearing that familiar red. Vaquetas will wear the white and the blue trim. Some final words from Coach Vasquez for his team. And also our officials here this afternoon, Fred Houston will be high above the court, making the calls. Terry Jackson will be along the lines. We expect an enthusiastic crowd on hand. Aaron, love how teams come and support their fellow teams here in these championships year in and year out. And these players know it. There's a ton of enthusiasm inside the arena. Yeah, and most teams are still at the convention center playing to get to this point. So even on those little breaks that they have, they're making their way over here. There's a lot of cheers that happen in volleyball as time goes on. And it's, it's a lot of fun, brings a lot of energy to the gym. So just about ready for first serve. And it looks like it is going to be Vaquetas. No, make that rocks red. With the first serve as Julia Kane will put it in play for the Floridians. OTVA and Vaquetas sit back and enjoy. It is certainly going to be fun. Shot from the back line. Nice dig that time by Falk. Amy Negron wearing number seven for Rocks Red. And there's a nice put down by Garcia, the outside hitter. And we really saw all the advanced skills in volleyball, back row attacks, jump serving on this play. Really smart to notice that the defender, the right back, who's probably setting in this position, wasn't in her home defensive position. And it's a really good tip to capitalize on that point. Figueroa, the libero for Vaquetas. They really like to work through her. Now Mercado, right side, they attack, and there's another one. That's Eralis Bermudez with the put down. And that's probably a scouting call, too, from Coach Freddy Vasquez. Watching this team over the past few days, he's recognized that the defender, that right back defender, doesn't want to stay in her home base. And he probably communicated that with, with his team. If you're going to attack, attack at that right back. Now Negron playing from the back line, Figueroa. Not going to see some of the big smashes that we're going to see with the 16 and 17 year olds, but you see how these players really focus on fundamentals. This one against the net, and the block is strong from Cruz, number 16, who was right there. And number 16, Cruz, actually closes that block really well. Nice pin set up by her right front, Garcia getting her there, making her stop in that position to get the block. Left side now. That's a tremendous kill by Amy Negron. Amy is a weapon. She keeps getting better month after month. And they keep feeding her the ball. OT just wants to set her the ball, and you can see why in this last play. She goes up there really aggressive. The middle blocker cheated a little bit farther than she wanted to and left that seam wide open. Tremendous elevation that time. And it's 3-1. Vaquetas comes in here, a decisive favorite. But if this team from Florida can just hang in, Aaron, they feel like they have got a chance. And that's one way they can do it, is capitalizing on all of the positions on the floor. Malinaric just going up there on that nice right side attack and swinging deep on the ball. That's a huge, huge asset to use, is to go deep. Service error, first one of the match for Rox Red, and that'll be a side out for Vaquetas. Vaquetas exceptionally strong in these younger age groups with the 12 and 13 year olds. Their feeder system is just phenomenal, one of the best in the world. And that serve, a little too hot to handle. It'll be a point for the team in white. 
and great hustle by OT Rocks Red to chase that ball down. But it's this top spin serve that's actually very, very traditional in the Puerto Rican style of volleyball. It's hard to get underneath that ball to make a good pass, but great hustle by Molinaric to try to get some kind of hand on that. A serve. So Vaquetas now is rattled off three in a row. And the first time out of the match for Rocks Red. So a good start by this Vaquetas team. And let's listen in now to Freddy Vasquez. Uh, Coach Vasquez, very calm at the moment. He is known to really, really get into things. We're watching him during warm-ups. They look like he was ready to suit up. And not many coaches at this level will talk strategy and timeouts, but he's sitting there. He's got his expo marker out. He's writing stuff on the board. He really, really wants to do some in in-match training to these young girls so that they get the, the light bulb goes up faster and they take less time to learn the game. Kept alive by Mercado. Rocks Red really could use a point here. They go to their wow. superstar, and she delivers. That's Negron again, second kill. Um, she's 12. She's 12 and did that. That's incredible. Down the line shot, the block actually made the adjustment because she went that sharp cross court the last time. The block actually cheated in just a little bit and left that zone wide open for her to just unload on the ball. Here's Negron again. This time goes a little soft with it. Kane with the dig, and they're going to go back to seven once more, and she's got the hot hand. And it's not even that OT Rocks Red is forcing the ball to Negron. They want her to get it. The passing has been really, really good, and the setting choices have been very good as well by Warner, but they're really trying to force the ball to the outside because that's where they want. They know that her arm is hot right now. But Kane right now doing a good job for Rox Red along that back line. She is a digging machine. Vaquetas, after two straight by this team from Florida, make it three in a row, and again, it's Negron. And Negron again with a, just a big rip. She has really closed the gap between these two teams right now. Even though Coral Figueroa, the libero for Vaquetas, she's done a really good job of controlling that second ball. It's hard to get underneath a swing like Negron's because she's just ripping on it. How about Molinaric's dig? Now Negron, this time, touches it over the net. And it's a net violation. Right now, she has got the Vaquetas defense on their heels. Yeah, and, and that's what they need. They needed OT Rocks Red really needed to close that gap of points so they didn't have to keep chasing the ball. Looks like on the way down, just caught the, caught the jersey. And that happens a lot when people want to block you. They, they feel like they have to block you. They tend to lose technique. All tied at six. And net violation this time on the Floridians. So Vaquetas gets a much needed point after four straight by Rox Red. So far, this has been a game of runs. Coach Vasquez going to have to do his best coaching job here this afternoon. Meanwhile, Kimberly Vock. Oh. And that's a tough break for Rox Red as it goes off the net and falls right in. But hey, if there's ever a perfect play in volleyball, that's one of them. If it can hit the tape, slow the ball down, and then just barely trickle over, that's those. you'll take those points all day. Cioyola, number six. Santiago, number seven for Vaquetas. That's on the line. And another ace for Vaquetas. And right as OT Rocks Red gets in there, it's the serve receive that kind of breaks down for them. But great job by Vaqueras for capitalizing on the weakness in that serve receive. Bernasette, nice run serving for this team from Puerto Rico. Oh, how about that shot? Negron, no way she's 12 years old. That, that was just silly. And that's in a completely different position than she likes to play. She's normally a left outside hitter in this rotation, rotation one. She's hitting from the right side. You're seeing the versatility in Negron at a 12-year-old's age that's playing at a 15-year-old competitive level. And it seems like every year we see emerging stars at this level, and we say, just wait. Just wait a few more years. Well, Negron right now is that player. She is serving for Rox Red, and she is on a roll. 
Rocks red now with one to tie and not going to do it this time as Vaquera is able to come back. And that's where you see the trickiness of the international play versus the American style. Rivera, number three for Vaquetas, was off the net. She would more likely go cross court, but just had a really, really nice kind of pop roll shot down the line to get that kill. Set number one here at the ESPN Wide World of Sports. We got a good one as the block party now shows up for Vaquetas. It's been silent so far, but you can tell Mercado wants to get it going. And great discipline by Mc, uh, Camila Santiago for staying in there and waiting. A lot of times, blockers don't want to wait on that. They'll jump too early, and then it'll hit the top of their fingers or something like that. For them to slow the ball down and get that block is very, very advantageous. Mariana Oyola serving for Vaquetas. This program is a dynasty in these age groups. A little out of sync right now for Rox Red. They do get it over. Oyola now sets it up right side, and the tap in is good. And that's what teams want to do. That's why having a good serve base or good serving team is such an important part of volleyball. You got your, your opponent out of system, then you get the free ball, and you can run whatever play you want, and they're still kind of chasing where they need to go. So really good playing um, by this Vaquetas team to go back to Mercado on that. Vaquetas right now on a roll. That's five straight for the team from Puerto Rico as this run started at 9-8. Now Oyola back to serve. Coach Vasquez was a little nervous for a moment, but has settled in over the last minute or so. And this ace is going to extend their lead. And that six service aces so far in this first set. That is a very, very tough serving team. Now, Aaron, I want to ask you, Oyola that time served right to Negron. Do you think that's a strategy for Vaquetas to try and make her receive? Yeah, and, and test her on that serve-receive line. Okay, what can she do? We've seen that she's a great attacker, but let's really push her where she's probably not the most comfortable and in that back row line. But it's also the positioning of where the server is actually serving the ball from. That's one of the hardest plays to read because you're – you have to try to see the ball around six people mm. that are typically at the net. So it's it's a design serve probably for the playing position, but also from the her positioning on the court. Now it's Oyola after the quick timeout by Rox Red. Keep in mind we played a 25 here. And AAU Junior Nationals, 44th edition of this great championship. And when you notice that a team gets out of system on their serve, Molinarik, she thinks that the ball is going to be off the net. She's not getting the body position that she wants. Even though the pass was good, she was anticipating it to be a little bit farther off the net. And that just kind of throws that kink into your overall offensive system. Mercado winning that joust makes it a 16-8 game. So now Rocks Red in some trouble here in set number one. Now this one's long. Alyssa Fegley. Just did not have the right mustard on. She's been a little bit quiet thus far, and Kimberly Box team now may have to make some adjustments. Cautiously optimistic she was when we spoke to her in the pregame, knowing that her team was up against <laughs> a tremendous club on the other side. And Vaquetta showing why. Dug nicely by Rivera. And this is going to be an illegal touch. So a point. Going to go to Rox Red. And let's see if they can establish a little bit of momentum here down 17-9. And what I'm so impressed about both of these teams is the speed of volleyball that they're playing at. Typically at the younger age group, the balls, they go up in the air higher. They're passed pretty high. It almost feels slower. But the tempo that these two teams are playing at is very, very high level. Into the net. So another point. For Rox Red, trailing by seven. Melissa Fegley, number nine you saw, goes by the nickname Lulu. And her sister, Amanda Fegley, headed to Penn State University. They have a kind of a good program there, don't they? <laughs> I think so. As that ball bounces out of bounds, and now three straight by Rox Red at 17-11. And the first service ace for OT Rox Red. 
that that variation that ratio is a little bit lower or a little bit lower than what a coach would want one error to one service ace put over by Mercado defense for rocks red's been tested James gets it over Vaquetas free-flowing right now offensively and Santiago just hammers away and you love to see Santiago understand that tempo the ball was set really high or the ball ball was passed really high so she had to be patient at that line but great footwork gets you there a little bit farther away from the ball than what she wants to be but the tempo is there and that's the hardest thing to teach good defense that time by Bernasette Rocks red now to the left side Fegley Fegley trying to get going for this team from Florida. This one is long, so Rox Red will have side out once again down six. It's the first of three days of championships that we're going to be bringing to you on ESPN3 as AAU Girls Junior Nationals. It's been a fabulous week of competition. Here at the ESPN Wide World of Sports and just walk through the arena. You see players hoisting trophies, some celebrating, some in tears. The emotion so high in this arena. That is the case here in this 12 Open Championship. Vaquetas keeping it alive with Bernasette. And now Rocks Red needs a big swing here. Martin got it over. Vaquetas able to play it into the net. Mercado couldn't put it over. And really good ball control by Mercado. It just looked like she was a little bit farther away than what she wanted to. That right side attack is hard because if you're right-handed, you have to get your feet to the ball first before you make the swing. And that's a hard adjustment at this at a younger age. So a smart timeout by Coach Freddy Vasquez. The lead is four, but slowly Rocks Red has started to creep back into this match. Yeah, and sooner or later, Negron's going to get back to the front row. And so how is that going to impact the scoring and the, okay. the momentum for both all of right, these you guys, teams? Lulu, I need you to swing. you got to get back for a big approach, all right? Let's go. It's amazing how far along these young players are as Coach Vach will take a seat. Aaron, it seems like the, the younger players just they look more advanced year after year. You mentioned the speed, also the hand-eye coordination, the passing, and, of course, the swinging as well. Yeah, and it's just so it always makes me so excited about the sport because they're these girls are they're getting that natural competitive instinct at such a younger age where when I was playing in 12 year olds, it was more well, let's just kind of keep the balloon off the floor kind of, you know, let's just play some fun thing that gets us out of the house and our parents don't have to watch us. But now it's really, really competitive and they're getting a lot of the Olympic techniques at a younger age. Rocks red. Back to a three-point set, and that's a tough service error because it kind of breaks the momentum as they were about to cut it to two. So instead of a two-point lead, it's now four for Vaquetas as they're trying to be the first to 20. Oh, miss hit at the net. Vaquetas misjudged it that time. Rox Red's going to have a side out. And those are so hard. I mean, I, I know people that are in the collegiate level and still make that mistake where they just over jump it. Cruz really, really wanted to go up there. Number 16 for Vaquetta. She wanted to go up there and just slam that ball down, but just mistimed it a little bit. And her team thought she was going to get it. But I, we see that happen all the time. It's just hard to read. Against the net, Rocks Red, 1917. They have very quietly gotten back into this match. Haven't had a lot of explosive points, but have really shored things up defensively. Danielle Work along that front line now. Organize, organize. Get to the outside, get to the outside. Set up by Mercado. Left side they attack. Another try for Vaquetas on the deck. How about that play? They avoid going into the net. Trying to attack the corner. Vaquetas able to recover. Falk 
Left side, that's their best opportunity, and it goes long. Boy, Negron had the swing she wanted, but just couldn't get it in bounds. And didn't recognize where she was in relationship to the antenna. So Negron goes up there, takes a big swing, thinks she has the line, but actually swings just a smidge outside of that antenna. Side out back to Rocks Red. But Kettis has led for this entire set. Here in the 12 Open Championship. Rocks Red has not led thus far. But again, getting closer. Keep in mind, we played a 25. And people think that those bullet serves are actually, they're really hard to read, but they're the easier ones. These nice and high lollipop a little bit serves, they're harder to read because you don't know if you should move your feet or play with your hands, and all of a sudden it's going to drop on you. Here's Negron. Mercado. And this one's going long. Garcia couldn't get it in, and we are tied at 20. Timeout, Vaquetas. And everybody a little stunned here on center court. Pero la bola tú no se la tira encima de ella. How is this team from Florida been able to get back into this match? Let's listen in to Freddy Vasquez. Por eso es que tú proteges la esquina, porque si el balón va para atrás, tú tienes que apoyar. Si es para el otro lado, tú proteges para el otro lado, pero tienes que moverte con desplazamiento coordinado para que tengas balance. Que tenga para reaccionar, vamos. One, two, three. All right, Coach Vasquez, you mentioned rarely do coaches okay, talk strategy really in key moments of a match. Why is that, Aaron? Because you, all the work you've done leading up into the match has already been done in practice. All the things, all the techniques that you have, at that point, you can't learn anything new in the heat of a match. But you can pick up on tendencies and techniques of the other team. And some coaches at this level don't want that. First lead of the match for Rocks Red. And it comes courtesy of their top player, Negron. And had such a, f a great first rotation at the net for this OT Rocks Red. They really forced the ball to Negron as much as possible, and I expect them to do that now as we get closer to that 25-point mark. Dug by Danielle Work. Negron's going to get another shot. Right now, she has caught the touch. 22-20. And it's really trying to attack that line because the um, Vaquetas team is not playing a full rotation. They're playing rotation where the setter comes up, but the middle back stays in the middle, leaving that one zone really susceptible. And with somebody like Negron who has that ball control, you have to make an, a, de a defensive adjustment to, to react to that play. Vaquetas needs a point. They have gone cold here, late in set number one. Negron. Out, hit it a little bit wide. So nip and tuck in our first televised match here on center court. Coach Vach looks up at the scoreboard. She knows that her team needs this set big time. Negron comes up, and that is just unplayable on the other side. And it's really smart by Coach Vock to kind of move her around the court, make her make the defense see her from different angles because they don't know what to expect. They knew that she, Negron wants to go line on the outside, so why not have her come in in that two attack or a middle attack and just give the defense something else to look at? Big swing. Dug by Kane. Here's Negron again. Goes to the left hand. Oh, wow. And it's moments like that when you're setting like Molinarek and that ball's a little bit tight to the net, you go up to your hitter and you say, oh, thank you for doing that. Thank you for saving that. Because without Negron's athleticism and her instinct to get that play, that ball would have been an easy point for the opponent. Set point now. Rocks Red trying to go up a set. This one's long. And the team from Orlando, Tampa, and Gainesville comes back. Amy Negron leading the way with nine kills. One set to nil over Vaquetas. Rocks Red, what a comeback. So we'll step aside and come back to the HP Fieldhouse. High fives on one side. How is Vaquetas gonna respond? We're gonna find out coming up next. 
When you run Disney, every mile is magic. That was marathon and half marathon races through the Disney theme parks are waiting for you at Walt Disney World Resort in Florida and Disneyland Resort in California. Known for courses lined with Disney entertainment and the best finisher medalers around, run Disney events are a must do for veteran runners and newcomers alike. For more information, visit rundisney.com. You guys mind if I join? Yeah, sure. Come on, stop hogging it. Pass it. Bad pass. It's bad feet. Chest high. I need a chest high. Right here. Go the distance with Disney and the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex in Florida by training or competing in one of the many track and field events hosted here annually. From Disney Track and Field Spring Training to the Walt Disney World Cross Country Classic to Disney Track and Field Showcase, get ready for your season or get noticed by any of the numerous college recruiters in attendance. Check out DisneyTrackandField.com for more information. All it takes is one player getting red hot to lead a team to victory. Right now, Rox Red riding the hot hand of Amy Negron. She was sensational in that first set. Yeah, and what she really did was help inspire her team to kind of rally around, even though they were down a few points in the beginning. Having her unload her arm swing really helped her team to step up the intensity, and they really matched her, her comp competitive play in that first set. Rox Red was down by as many as eight points. It was 16 to eight at one point. Nine times out of 10, you can book it when a team is that far ahead in match play or in, um, in rally scoring. But somehow this Rox Red team digging deep and Negron getting hot. And let's see how they respond now being up a set. And it was the serve receive that was really the biggest dictator of that big lead in the beginning for OT Rocks Red. So how are they going to respond in the second set? Are they going to really tighten that part of the matchup? Or are they going to, you know, have to continue to rally around Negron? Now for Vaquetas, what they did really well is they took those first ball opportunities and they executed a lot of first ball kills, which is what gave them the, that big lead along with the tough serving. But they do need to get that defensive element back and try to shut down Negron and then the other players on this OT Rocks Red team to sneak back in the second set. Take a look at Freddy Vasquez. He called several timeouts towards the ends of, of that first set, but just could not stop the momentum of Negron and Rocks Red. So Vaquetas not used to being in this situation, dropping that first set. This is where you see these young players, Aaron, how they respond through a little adversity. Yeah, and they're only 12 and one on this tournament. They've only dropped one set throughout this whole thing. So that's that's pretty important. That's something you have to keep in mind. And you said you said it perfectly. How do they respond to being in that adverse situation? Negron taps it over for Rox Red. She'll swing oh, one more save. time. Garcia, the first point for Vaquetas. And Mercado, the setter for Vaquetas, has done such a good job of quarterbacking this offense. She's pushing the ball to the left side, to the right side, and she's making this OT Rocks Red team not be able to read what the offense is going to do, and that allows her hitters to capitalize. Kept alive by Mercado. She has been a rock for Vaquetas here so far. Negron right now along the front line. Negron taps it over. Rivera, the good save. And one of the longest points of the match right now. Blocked at the net. 
But this one is sailing out. It'll be a point for Vaquitas. And again, Mercado really, really pushing that ball all over the floor. Every time she touches the ball, she's slowing it down and she's setting with intention. And great swing by Bermudez, number 11, on that right-hand side. Very heavy. She noticed the block wasn't disciplined and capitalized on that lack of discipline. So Bernicette serving for the team from Puerto Rico. Rocks red a little out of system, and Cruz is there to put it down. So not a good start in the second set for Rocks Red as Vaquetas is out 3-0. And number 16, Diane Cruz from Vaquetas had that one miscue, mistime jump in that first set and has immediately learned from it and was a little bit more patient on that one and got the kill out of it. Figueroa keeping it alive. And Bermudez able to get another point for Vaquetas. And again, great serving takes big hitters out of the match. So the tough serving from Vaquetas hasn't allowed OT Rocks Red to go to their weapon, number seven, Negron, on the outside. Here's Negron. Little spin on that one. Comes back for Mercado. And now from the back line. Right now, Vaquetas, a renewed sense of energy. And Coach Vasquez knows it. And there's been a few swings from this Vaquetas team that OT has gotten underneath it, and it's gone way back over the net. So that shows you how much power and how much pop they're putting on the ball. And it's really hard for OT Rocks Red to respond defensively. Here's Necron. Passing very crisp. On the side for the young Puerto Ricans right now. And they are on a 6-0 roll here in set two. And not only on, are they on that 6-0 six, six roll, they seem to have things a little bit more figured out. They're a little bit more fine-tuned into the second set. And they're not having those miscues, those miscommunications like they did in the middle of the match into the first set that we saw. Rocks Red desperately needing a side out here. Kane gets on the deck as she has done so many times so far this afternoon, Bermudez keeping it alive. Here's Garcia. And number four, Garcia taking, <laughs> taking a play out of Negron's playbook and going down that line, sees that wide opening. The block isn't set where she wants it to be, a little bit too far inside, and just gets a really nice pop to go down the line. Be aggressive. We've got to get her a ball. Let's do something different. Put a two ball in the middle, let her go for it, OK? You need to block. Keep your hands up. We need a pass. So a timeout for Coach Bach trying to just refocus her team. Obviously, a lot of emotion after you win that first set. You come out in the second set and maybe a little bit of a lapse in concentration here as you take a look at the kills. And it's really, kills are pretty closely even matched. It's the serve receiving, the serve errors that have been the biggest differentiator between these two teams. That's put over and finally a point by Rocks Red. They were trailing by a touchdown and now it's 7-1. And so when you're serving, the focus now becomes, okay, we have to play defense to hold this ball. That's how we are going to be guaranteed points. So good defense is going to help close this gap, the six-point gap for OT Rocks Red into the second set. Negron, just the right mustard on it. Garcia, perfect. Joma Garcia so far has been excellent. And she's so athletic. People at this age don't expect somebody to go up and swing on that ball. It's so far out of system, it's, it's really high up in the air. But here comes Garcia, confident in her ability, confident in her fundamentals, goes up and takes a little nice pop on the ball. And now Garcia serving, and Joma Garcia has the right touch. Right now, this player here talked about Negron for Rocks Red, but Garcia just as lethal for Vaquetas. And she's had a little bit slow of a start, but she's really started to come alive, especially into the second set. Eight point lead for Puerto Rico. Now from the back row, Garcia making her presence felt again. Warner up to Negron. 
The right side. Softly with it, and that's out of bounds. And it's the right idea because there was such a scramble on the OT Rocks red side of that play. The tipping choice is the correct choice, but you can see her finish away from her body. If she would have kept it in front of her, she would have con she would have continued the ball going forward rather than to the side. Rivera puts it over and a little bit taken off that one. I believe it grazed the net, so it drops right in the middle of that Rocks red defense. So keep in mind, Red Rocks Red trailed by eight, yeah. came back and won in the first set. They trail by eight once again. Well, and the biggest challenge for OT Rocks Red right now is they're, the balls that aren't hit very aggressively, it's the off-speed shots that are catching them off guard, the ones that hit the block and then just land middle-middle. They're not taking those opportunities as free ball opportunities. Everything working right now for Puerto Rico. That's Bermudez that time. So it's been Mercado, it's been Bermudez, it's been Garcia and Rivera for Vaquetas. Substitution now as Alyssa Fegley will enter the game for this team from Florida. Julia Kane goes to the bench. And the first ace of set two for Rocks Red. Amy Negron back to serve. She was the big story in the first frame. Rivera puts it over. Negron. Garcia was there, and now this is Rivera again, right through the block. And OT Rocks Red was given the opportunity for a really good transition point. They got a free ball, but there was a miscommunication, and they had to almost free ball it back, leading to the setup of that point. So it's those little things, those little differences that they can make in ball control that's going to help them kind of sneak back in and go on those runs of points. But great job by Vaquetas to just take it and be really competitive and aggressive, like we've just seen. Just wide. Point for Florida. And this is Jade Bedell with her first serving job here this afternoon. Trying to get everybody some playing time here in this 12 Open Championship at the ESPN Wide World of Sports. Drew Felios and Aaron Campbell, thrilled to have you with us from the Walt Disney World Resort. Negron from the back line, dug by Garcia. And that'll be another point for Rocks Red. And a really good swing by Negron out of the back court. It's hard to see on those plays because she's so close to that 10-foot line, but really good body control. Took a nice jump behind the 10-foot line, took aggressive swing on the back row attack. Malineric served up for Fegley. Fegley really trying to get involved. And this one, see, is it a touch? Yes, it will be. Point for Puerto Rico. Yeah, it looks like Cassandra Martin at no. <laughs> hey, if, if you're a middle and you're going to go up there and you're going to block this ball, I, as a coach, I'm happy. Oh. But it looked like they called the touch on Warner. Ooh. Interesting. Terry Jackson, our official on the court. Here this afternoon, 14-6 now. The edge to the team in white. If you're just joining us, Rocks Red came back from an eight-point deficit in the first set to win. And it has made things really interesting and really tense. Here's the favorites, Vaquetas, are right now trying to equalize at a set apiece. 14-7, still a long way to go. And even though that ball went out of bounds, it was actually forced out by OT Rocks Red because the block was set up well and the defense was set up well. There was no good shot for Vaquetas to take on that side. So that's what they need to do to get in, back into this match is play good defense. Here's Fegley. And that may be the X factor for Rocks Red if Alyssa Fegley can start to pick things up. 
on the red side. And you see the moments of brilliance. Every time she goes up there, her arm swing is very, very mechanical. While it might not be as strong as probably her sister's is, she has the fundamental set, so she's going to get those really nice swings and nice top spin on the ball as the match goes on. Give her another chance. And it's going to be a point for Vaquetas. Talk about that arm swing. Is that kind of like a pitcher's speed in Major League Baseball? Is that something you're kind of born with? In a sense, um, in a sense, I think that like it's more of like teaching a changeup. Like you teach the fundamentals of that, and then you get better with it as you go along. Mm -hmm. Now it's not something you're necessarily born with. Now the instinct is probably more similar to the speed, the timing instinct that can't really be taught. You just understand it. The arm swing is something that can evolve and be taught over time. Uh, several of these players definitely have it. As Cruz gets a big point, she has been a force in the middle for Puerto Rico here this afternoon, 16-8. Keep in mind, we had this identical score in the last set. Red Rocks was trailing, they came back and won. It's gonna be a tough task to do that this time, though, as Vaquetas extends to a nine-point edge. Yeah, it's hard to do that once. Imagine trying to do that twice in a match, especially when a national championship's on the line and your other team, your opponent, is really starting to fine-tune their craft. The defense for this Viquetta side has stepped up significantly into the second set. Coach Kimberly Vock, one of the best in the business. You know, this team, Rocks Red, Aaron, they even have their own hashtag, and it is hashtag tiny beasts they go by so every time they play they're being seen or heard tiny beasts hashtag tiny beasts for rocks red it has worked to get them to, the, to this point yeah and i think that that's a really a really suiting name for them they're just really aggressive and they're they are tiny but they're probably taller than most people think the camera doesn't do them justice they're they're pretty tall 12 year olds last year finished third at the usa volleyball championships as 11 year olds this Nucleus has stayed intact and now trying to win an AAU Junior National Crown against Vaquetas. Nicely done as Fegley finds the line and paints it. And when the feet your arm swing goes where your feet go. So if you're under the ball in the correct position, see how she floats away? See how it's right over that almost um, 12 o'clock position on that arm swing. You have to fight with your feet to get there, and she did a really nice job on that last play. Right in the middle. Oh, nice block. And that was up front, taken in by Cruz. Day and Cruz very quietly has really stepped up her play. And she really has been the X factor in the middle for this Vaquetas team. Just really disciplined. Doesn't have to jump very high because her strength and her discipline in her hands is paying off for this team. Got very soft hands up there. And Vaquetas benefiting as that shot goes long. And Puerto Rico is pulling away here in the second set. Back to serve now is Mercado. Ten-point edge for Vaquetas over Rocks Red. Garcia. Now it's Negron. She has not had the type of second set that she did in the first, but we still got a lot of volleyball to play. Yeah, and it was it was the response from Vaquetas that really forced her out of her comfort zone, but she responds so well to it. Finally going back to that line shot that she liked so much in that first set. Eric now over to Negron. Good dig by Figueroa, the libero for Vaquetas. And hitting percentage has been very efficient for Vaquetas here in this second set. Yeah, very lo low error volleyball. And what they're doing is if the ball isn't where set where it needs to be, they're being smart about the placement, forcing their opponent out of system, setting the next play up for a good in rotation play. Now it's Bermudez, Rivera also putting it over. And Aaron, it is 
experiences like this, teams from Puerto Rico, you got all these great players come to Disney World, that makes these players want to come here to the mainland of the United States and play college volleyball, isn't it? Yeah, and they see so many different types of playing. Like, we're noticing it even in just this match, okay? The American side is a little bit more power, where now the Puerto Rican side's going more to the soft and finesse in their attacking to capitalize on that. So you get to see so many different levels of volleyball in this arena, and it, it, this tournament is, is definitely one of the best. Macy Malineric serving now for Rocks Red. Ten point advantage for Vaquetas, 21 11. We are likely headed to a third set. But don't go away just yet. Garcia goes short with it. Negron can't put it over. And Vaquetas now three points away from making this a three set match. And again, OT Rocks Red responded so well to the power shots of Vaquetas. It's these off speed, middle, middle shots that are in front of them. They don't really know how to read it. And that's been the biggest difference, I think, for this Vaquetas team. They're capitalizing on those soft shots in the middle of the court. Cruz just went out of the game. Big round of applause for Vaquetas. She had just a terrific run. Here at set two, and it continues. Now closing in, 23-11. And when you have number three, Rivera, and number seven, Santiago, in the front row, that seems to be a really good combination, not just offensively, but they just had a huge block on Negron on the other side. James hit a little short, did find its way over. Now Melineric, the set. Fegley can't do anything with it. Nicely dug by Bernicet. Negron. Here's Rivera again. Kane keeps it alive. Now Warner puts it over. Another long point. Back row, Garcia. Figley. Check that. That's Warner. Ariana Warner for Rocks Red with the point. And Warner hasn't seen a lot of the offensive attacks in, on that right-hand side, but when they need another weapon or another another shot to put against this Vaquetas team, that's a really smart one to use off that right side. Rocks Red just trying to get some points on the board here, get some momentum. Preparing for set number three. Warner, the nice kill. And a cautious timeout five Vaquetas as Fegley hits it over for Rocks Red. So Fegley back into the game, making things happen. She has been the bright spot here in set two for the team from Florida. Coach Vasquez now wants his team to close because remember, they kept that door cracked open just a little bit in set one. And OTVA took advantage of the opportunity. They want to go away decisively here, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And they do that by playing really good defense and then forcing their opponent out of system as much as possible, which they've done, which they've done a good job of. They've really kind of forced OT Rocks Red to be uncomfortable, have to try to move forward on those plays rather than just stay where they are and play some defense. going to be played at the net so 23 14 as rocks red gets another yeah! set point coming up for puerto rico and that's a tough break you all it's that we're seeing that fine line of okay well i want to be aggressive on my serve but i also don't want to hit it into the net and I like that this OT Rocks Red team is starting to get a little bit more aggressive behind the line, but that's definitely not a serve you want to miss. Fegley's been tough to deal with, and in set three, they're going to need her big time combining with Negron. Those two players going to have to be at their peak if.
this American team wants to win. I agree, and because you have to respond to the level of competitiveness of the Viquettas team, there's three or four or five hitters on this team that are scoring points. So you have to respond, and you can't be off of one shoulder like Negron's. You need somebody else to, to compliment her on the, on the front of the line. That's a great point, Aaron, as Fegley scores again. So Roxred finding something here. And a big positive point to build on if this does go to that third frame. There it is. Vaquetas able to cruise in set number two, 25 to 16. They win by nine with plenty of momentum heading into our third and deciding game. So the AAU Junior National Volleyball Championship continues. Set three coming up. Vaquetas and Rocks Red right after this. With over 100 college coaches in attendance, female high school athletes can contend for scholarships on the national stage. To find out how your team can compete here, visit DisneyFieldHockey.com. Disney soccer tournaments sponsored by AS Roma provide athletes of all ages the opportunity to compete against athletes from across the U.S. and around the world. From three-on-three -three youth tournaments to elite showcase events with hundreds of college recruiters present. The ESPN Wide World of Sports Soccer Program offers something for everyone. To find out how you can play here, visit DisneySoccer.com. Hundreds of high school and college teams maximize their preseason training by heading to the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex at Walt Disney World for our annual Disney Lacrosse Spring Training, featuring clinics and combines with Casey Powell. Preparation and competition at the finest multi-sport facility in the world will help ensure your squad's success throughout the season. For more information, visit DisneyLacrosse.com. Tale of two sets. A tale of two sets here at the 12 Open Final. At the ESPN Wide World of Sports, Vaquetas dominating the second frame. Rocks Red coming back in thrilling fashion. And set number one, Drew Felios, Aaron Campbell, as we get set for the third and deciding frame for Vaquetas. Right now, Garcia is the player that is just blazing away. And was really quiet in that first set, but has really stepped up her play. She's responding well to the attacks of her opponent, but she's also mixing up where she's attacking on the court and capitalizing on the holes in those defense. And then just has overall great ball control and is getting her feet to the ball and, and really just does a good job of keeping her team in the play as it goes farther along into transition. So Joma Garcia, the outside hitter, bringing her team back after dropping that first frame. Five kills, a couple aces to go with it. So as we look ahead here to the third and deciding frame for Fakedis, what do they have to do to run away and take this match and become champions again? Keep that really tough serving on this OT Rocks Red team. They haven't been able to respond as well on the serve receive side. That allows the Vaquetas team to run the plays that they want in transition and get those big powerful hill, hits. They're going to give the ball to Garcia. They're going to give the ball to Rivera. And then Mercado is just going to do a great job of quarterbacking that offense. On the other side, if you are Rocks Red, you are awesome at the end of that first set. But now heading into that third frame, you've gone cold just a little bit. How do you relight the fire once again, Aaron? You have to have the balance off of Negron in the front row. When she's in the front row, everybody knows she's going to get the ball. And that puts a lot of pressure on her, but she's been able to step up to that challenge. Now what they need is for the remaining three rotations, they need somebody like Fegley, she did in that last set, to step up and take the weight off of Negron so she doesn't feel like she has to score every single time. There's the superstar, Amy Negron. She was sensational in that first set a little quiet in the last set only one kill had a little help from Melissa Fegley but it is going to have to be a team effort here to take down this team from Puerto Rico Danielle work has done some great work for Rocks Red defense has been pretty solid 
for this team made up of some of the best players in Orlando, Tampa, and Gainesville. Those are some volleyball hotbeds Amen around the state. <laughs> Amen to that. Love to see when you take some of the best teams in the United States, some of the teams that we see dominate. Then you bring teams from China, from Puerto yeah. Rico. We've seen teams here from all over the world, and they just bring a whole new dimension to the game, don't they? Yeah, and there's just there's so many different focus points for each culture in the game of volleyball. With the Chinese, it's very, very much fundamentals. I mean, they are like living, breathing beings of volleyball. Then you see the Puerto Rican style. It's a little bit more beachy. It's got that kind of beachy flavor to it, but they tend to be a little bit shorter, so they focus a lot on arm swing. And then in the U.S., naturally, we just want to be big bombers and just swing heavy on the ball. Doug in the back row by Kane. Let's see which team starts out fast here as Negron gets it over. Bermudez able to set it up, and that's the first kill for Puerto Rico. They get off to a good start. And it's even just the complexity and their ability to back row attack at this age is what really is, is impressing me from this Vaquetas team. I mean, I know collegiate players that really didn't feel comfortable swinging out of the back row. I say that because I was one of them. So I, I really, really appreciate how how controlled and how aggressive these young girls are on that back row attack. Service error going to even things up here. As Julia Kane will now put in the air for Rox Red. Take a look at Lissa Fegley along the front line. Nice dig that time. Negron now gets it over for Rox Red. Bermudez. Falk, the libero, making things happen for Rox Red. Took a little off that one, and Garcia has just been able to put the finishing touches on so many points here today. And again, the level of ball control you have to have to perfectly place that roll shot is very, very high level. Very smart, too, noticing that the defense in transition was really spread out, leaving again that middle middle zone that OT rocks red has left pretty susceptible the whole match again open for a, an easy kill Mercado now taps it over Falk right there left side and there's another point ring it up Garcia again and even in the 12s level you have to put some kind of block in front of somebody that swings like this. You have your right side attacker, number eight, work coming off the net, maybe thinking and anticipating that roll shot, but she needs to be up there to block. Rox Red gonna have to try and break this rhythm that Vaquetas has been able to establish. Take a look at that poster, <laughs> this team. They really play like professionals, even though they're only 12 years old. They have impressed us here this afternoon at the ESPN Wide World of Sports, and they lead 5-1. And what you love to see, even from the different side of the cultures, is how how much they love volleyball. It's like, you know, they're soccer in most cultures. And you see that kind of bleeding into the U.S. culture as well because it's such a dominant sport for young young ladies. Now Rocks Red, a little out of system, and Kimberly Vock knows it. Got to call a timeout. And when you're playing to 15, yeah. you can't give up six points like that out of the gates that's tough to recover from yeah and that's exactly what I was thinking too is you have less time to make that up we've seen them come back from those deficits but you don't have the marathon of 25 points to get there you can only go to 15 and these sprint matches are very very hard to battle back from you have to stay within a one to two point range coach Vox assistant coaches Kevin Lopez Wendy Warfield and Yvonne Devlin Coach Vasquez done a good job riding the ship after a collapse in the first set. His assistants, Oscar Figueroa and Juan Mercado. Five-point edge for Puerto Rico as Negron gets back into it. And Aaron, where has that been over the yeah. last set? And I think it's the, the dimension of moving her across the across the front line. She's hit from the left side every single time. Now they move her again to that middle shot where she's swinging just in a little bit different position so the defenders don't know where to play defense around her. Now Garcia a little uncomfortable on the other side. Rox Red going to try and take advantage and go on a run themselves. Much needed. Two straight points. 
and really the first time we, we've we seen Vaquetas not be able to respond to that off-speed shot, but great swing by Warner. We saw her kind of come to life a little bit into that second set when they needed to balance off of Negron, and they need to try to force the ball to her as much as possible still. How about the slide run by 12-year-olds? About as well as you can run it. <laughs> yeah. And again, no block because it was just such a shock. Like, who, who's 12 and wants to slide in the national championship match? 7-3. See that Vaquetta side. They are ready to explode. They want to celebrate here at the Walt Disney World Resort. Rox Red is going to make them earn it, though. As hitting the deck was Mercado. Couldn't keep it alive. Take a look at Ariana Warner. Warner and Akela James right now along the front line for Rox Red. That one's going to go long, though. And it looked like one of the back row players, Bernasset, almost tried to get that ball or tried to, tried to see and like test it and see if it was a little bit farther out and just dropped her hands at the last second. So that was a, a smart play. 8 4, we switch sides. And you see the some of the fans also <laughs> will get up and switch sides as well. As Garcia gets set to serve for Vaquetis. It's been a very entertaining match. And for a lot of the young players that are watching here today, watching these players go at it for a championship, there's so much to learn, so many ways to fine tune your game when you watch some of the best in this age group go head to head. Malineric, tough place to play it. Somehow they get it done as Warner was up against the, the tape. Oh, great defense. Oh, great hustle. Can't get it over, though. That is a team that is not ready to give up a national championship. Just that fire, that aggressiveness on defense. That's really important. You can build on plays like that. It's the balls that land in the middle of the court that no one goes for that take that energy out of you. But when people are scrambling and making plays, that's a very, very good momentum builder. Negron with the dig in the back row. Trying to get more involved offensively as Rox Red trying to just manufacture points even when they don't get those big swings. And Warner worth the free ball kill. <laughs> Not very often do you see that, but it was just perfectly placed, very, very tight to the net, and it was almost like a swing. Good chance here for Rox Red coming up to swing it, and they're going to say that is in. Going to get a challenge here. Santiago goes to our official up top, Fred Houston, and they're still going to give Rox Red the point. And what Vaquetas is fighting about is that Negron's in the back row and took a pretty big rip in front of that 10 foot line. So now is it is it she over the line or yeah, that's that's definitely a back row attack. So I can see why they were fighting it. She's actually below. She's actually above the plane of the net. She can jump, but she has to stay below the plane of the net. But she is such an aggressive and powerful hitter that that technically is a back row attack. So Rox Red gets away with one. Vaquetas does not let that no. shake them because sometimes yeah. points in a match like that when a call doesn't go your way can kind of throw you off kilter but Vaquetas stays to the task at hand and great response by just getting a good pass I mean that's where it all starts if your back row is focused and zeroed back in to make a good pass everything goes along with it now Santiago able to put it over nice work at the net by Warner soft hands Rivera coming back That's Rivera, and that one's long. Substitution now as Danielle Work will come back in for Rox Red. Taking a seat is Malineric. There's Rivera. Bermudez and Cruz able to touch. Here's Fegley. It's a two point set. And because Fegley has that really, really high arm swing, it's that that those tips that she's going to get. It's going to hit off the top of those hands and find its way out just with good technique and just good high arm swing. The block was set up well, but it was the positioning of the contact that made the difference.
crowd really getting into this championship match. The 12 open final. Boy, if Kimberly Vox team can somehow find a way to pull this one off, I think this will be a huge upset yeah. because Vaqueras, they have more firepower. And it looks like they're a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more experienced. But this Rocks Red team definitely has something that they are trying to pull out of them right here in this yeah. championship moment. Yeah, and they ha and even in this set, we talked about it. It's a, it's a sprint. You know, there's not many opportunities to fight back on a big, big lead. But so far, they've gotten a little bit more aggressive on their defense and on their serve receive. A little bit of confusion, oh. and it is going to be a point for Rox Red. Fans can't believe it. Look like it may have grazed the line, but they call it out. So 10-9 is your score. So a couple controversial plays have gone Rox Red's way. Vaquetas playing through a little adversity. And again, it's about that soft touch that this Vaquetas team has done such a good job. But let's look back at that free ball. Ooh. Oh, that looks in. <laughs> that looks in. We've had a few, we've had a few calls. But you know what? God bless these refs. They have been working their tails off all weekend. So if they have two missed calls in a match like this, you know that's 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 pretty minimal compared to <laughs> what we see in other sports. So the lead now is two, and looks like they're going to give it over to Rox Red. Another moment here that kind of makes you scratch your head, and it looks like Vaquetas was out of rotation, yeah. Aaron. Oh, that just that just steals all the steam from your engine. And an ace. Wow. <laughs> and right back in it. Right back in it. I can't believe it. After such a big deficit, six points in the third set. That's incredible. Swings of momentum here in this 12 Open Championship. Rox Red has somehow managed to tie this one. And Coach Vock right now is telling her team, we are, are in you? this. Let's listen in. Coach Vox team feeling pretty good right now as we're even right now, at 11. Perhaps hey, just four go. points away. Big block, big Tense block. moments here in the HP Fieldhouse. Rivera's swing is in. And I don't know if that's a strategic play to only have the one block, but you have to respond. We know that the offense for this Vaquetas team is so powerful. Why are they only having the middle block the attacks on the outside? That's leaving up way too much court for them to go off. It's almost like batting practice for baseball. You have to have both blockers in front to defend that play. Warner the set. There's Necrone. And do they get the touch? No, no touch. It will be a point for Vaquetas. Thirteen, eleven, timeout. Rocks red. So Vaquetas, last year champions in the twelve open and thirteen open, they are used to getting to this point and winning it all. So they're going to they're going to stay on the same play. They're going to give the ball to Negron unless the pass is way out of system. So we've seen her be probably her most efficient in that two attack in the middle. She did have the last error on that play. So I love that Coach Valk wants to go back to her and show that she has that trust. Rocks Red needs an answer. Their backs against the wall here. Negron has it. And it's 13-12. James comes back in for Rox Red. This is Sarah Falk, who won a national title with her team in Gainesville last year. Now Necron, softly on that left side. Bermudez able to keep it alive. Back row swing. Dug again nicely. Avoid the net violation there, but a free ball for Mercado. 
and great defense and trying to keep that play up. But wow, Mercado is excited. I love that. Look at her go up, though, so aggressive. Again, because the Puerto Ricans have that nice little wrist snap, she gets some nice nice top spin on the ball, and it just sails right to the ground. And she's so excited. I love it. Emotions running high. <laughs> <laughs> Players trying to keep everything in check here. Bernasette serving for the match. Negron softly. How about the dig by Mercado? Now Garcia. Falk able to keep it alive. Negron again. Garcia. Negron gets on the deck. We play on. First match point, Great one defense. of the most exciting of the match. Negron has been all over the place, but Vaquetas with Garcia can't finish it again. Into the net, and there you go. Vaquetas has taken it all in the 12 Open Championship. Emotions were running high. Rocks Red trying to complete what would have been a thrilling comeback, but Vaquetas able to dig deep, and they got the big points, Aaron, when they needed it most. And it was the battle of the two players we've said the most, Garcia and Negron on both sides, going to be really aggressive. I love that Negron wanted to make this play really, really hard for her opponent, but it's almost like keep it simple. Force them to do something. But great playing by both sides. Vaquetas just had the edge in that serve receive game and that serving side today. So Vaquetas, 12 Open champions. And if our remaining two matches today are anything like this, man, we have got a heck of a day in store. 13 Open final coming up at 4 p.m., 14 Open championship at 6.30. Tears of joy for Vaquetas champions and the best in the world in AAU in the 12 age range. Let's take a look at some final numbers. Kills nearly identical. Look at the blocks, though. Vaquetas had a little bit of a size edge, and they really knew how to use it. Yeah, and really in the kill department, they're very even keeled. It's those other little things. The, the differentiators between these two teams were the blocking and definitely, definitely were the aces. But Rocks Red really snuck in there and started to serve aggressive as well, but it was just too hard, too hard to match. Rocks Red a gutsy performance. Vaquetas, though, showed that they have the determination of champions as they get it done here at the ESPN Wide World of Sports. 44th AAU Junior National Volleyball Championships roll on. We'll remember this Vaquetas team in the 12 Open Final for a long time to come. And a great job by Rox Red. For Drew Felios, for Aaron Campbell, I'm Drew Felios and our entire crew here at Walt Disney World. We'll see you at 4 o'clock for the 13th Open Final.